They're some of the state's most picturesque spots, and soon they could be known by other names. I think it's a great idea. Um, I think, you know, that the first peoples are recognised, and I'm sure they'll be tickle pink about it. I think it's great, yes. I think it just sort of helps everybody um, and it's it's the, the native people used to come from Finders Island and camp in the in the, the grass over there. The place names have been compiled by the Aboriginal and Dual Naming Reference Group and sourced from primary language resources. Some of the 18 proposed include dual names for Suicide Bay in the far northwest, Mount Horror in the northeast, Ediston in the east and the Tasman Peninsula. Several are in the Dorset Council municipality. It's clearly important to the Aboriginal communities and it's important for them to be able to, you know, get the message about their ancestry and, and uh, out into the, more, into the broader community. And uh, so that's, yeah, I can see where, they've, uh, where they would need to do that. But others don't agree, saying dual names should all be in the one Palawakani language. It's a flawed system. We had a fantastic system worked out over a decade where the one and only Aboriginal language in the state was used. We know that there was more than one language group across Tasmania, so you know we want to be able to bring that another la oh, our language group back in. For sites like Mount Horror here and others earmarked across the state, the public consultation period will remain open until the end of November. After that, the final decision will be made by the Tasmanian Place Names Advisory Panel. It's very important that uh, our community, uh, stakeholders and of course our Aboriginal communities across Tasmania provide input into that consultation period. Tasmanian landmarks offering many views. Jessica Moran, ABC News.